Hello everyone, it's Bonnie and welcome to my little space online uh, time check. It is almost 10 p.m. and tomorrow I'm going out on a photo walk with some folks from the Toronto Analog Friends group, which is exciting. Um, we're going to the Toronto Islands and I've been there a couple of times during the summer, but I've never been there during the winter. So I'm really looking forward to see how the place is different during different seasons. And since I have to prepare what I'm going to be bringing anyways, I thought I might as well make this video to show you um, what I'm going to be bringing. So if you're interested in that, then stick around and follow along. Okay, so I don't necessarily think of myself as the planner type of person. However, when I know that I'm going to be going for a photo walk or going on a trip, I make sure that I'm going to be bringing the right equipment for what I want to capture. And in the past, I've always been the type of person to kind of bring more equipment that I need. And this year, I want to kind of tone down a little bit on the amount of stuff that I bring whenever I go on photo walks and kind of concentrate on one or two cameras that I'm going to be bringing. Might as well cut out on all of these choices and bring one or two cameras to make my life easier. Also, it's probably better for my back because camera gear does get heavy. And to be honest, if you're gonna be walking for two, three hours or even four hours with this heavy equipment, that's not really an enjoyable situation. Okay, so the first thing on my list is of course the bag that I'm gonna be using. And for my photo walks, I usually use my Peak Design bag. And I've had this since 2017 and it's a really awesome bag. However, as you can see in here, it's pretty big. And because there's lots of compartments, I always end up putting a lot more gear than I would be using. So this one works really well when I go travel. However, for photo walks, I think I want to use something smaller because you know, like as they say in urban design, induce demand doesn't help with traffic. So if I bring a smaller bag rather than a big bag, then I'm forcing to limit myself with the amount of gear that I'm gonna be bringing. Which brings me to the bag that I'm gonna be using. So, <laughs> this is heavy. So this is the bag that I'm gonna be using and let me just find out what the name of this bag is again. Cause I totally forgot. So this bag is called The Jumper by a company called Brevite and full disclosure, the company sent me this bag as a gift but they didn't sponsor this video so I am free to say whatever I want to say about this bag. I've been using this bag for a couple of weeks now and this has actually become my day-to-day -day bag. Like this is the one that I bring to work um, and I actually still have my work stuff in here but I'm gonna just take out the stuff that I'm not going to be needing for the photo walk, but it might give you an idea of what kind of things you can put in this bag. So right here at the back, there is a place where you can put your laptop. So you usually have to bring a laptop to work. I also have my iPad in there. So of course I also bring an umbrella because lately it's been really cloudy and rainy here in Toronto, which sucks, but it helps to have an umbrella. Now, one of the ways that I made this work for me for my everyday life is to kind of subdivide the bag into two parts. So the top part is like my everyday work stuff and the lower part could be my cameras like this one which is the Fujifilm Class W. And the way that I did that separation is by using these dividers that come with the bag. So you can basically use this to rearrange and subdivide the space to however you want or whatever your needs are. Um, which I find really amazing. Another reason why I like this bag is because, you know, it's stylish. And it doesn't actually look like a camera bag. I like the colors. Uh, they sent me the green version, which green is my favorite color. But this bag comes with multiple colors like yellow, red, blue, whatnot. I actually really like the yellow, so... Nah, I shouldn't get one. I mean, I already have one. I don't need more things. I have enough. Okay, so now that I've settled on which bag I'm going to be bringing, it's now time to look into the equipment. So the first camera that I'm going to be bringing is the Olympus Pan FT. 
So the Olympus Pan FT is a 35 millimeter film camera that takes half frame photos. If you've watched my episode on the Ektar H35, then think about the Olympus Pan FT as the more higher end version. Because while the Ektar H35 takes wonderful half frame film photos, it does have a plastic lens, so it's not really known for its quality. However, the Olympus Pan FT is a mechanical SLR that's from, I believe, to 1970s, 60s, and it's great. It's also very stylish, if you can see here. The quality of the images that comes from these lenses are amazing, and the camera is just really well built and really fun to use. However, I do know that this costs a lot more money, while the Actor H35 is about $50, so I guess you just gotta use what you can afford. However, I do like both of them. I think they both have different use cases and capabilities and aesthetics, even. Like, if you wanna get that disposable camera look, then you should definitely go for the Actor H35 but if you do want to get that extra quality from your film then I would suggest getting a camera like the Olympus Pan FT. Should I bring both of them? Here am I again. I think I'm just gonna bring one. I think I'm just gonna bring the Pan FT. Sorry Kodak Actor H35. Maybe later. Now, I also want to bring with me a regular 35mm camera, so I thought about bringing my Minolta SR505, which is a fully mechanical camera. It only needs the battery for the light meter that is inside. And the reason why I'm doing this is because it's winter and we're going to the Toronto Island, and so I'm expecting it to be a little bit colder in that area, and I'm worried that if I bring a camera that runs on batteries or motors, it might have a problem with the cold. However, if I'm just gonna be using a fully mechanical camera, I think I just have more peace of mind that it will carry on through the cold. For the lens, I'm just going to be keeping it simple. I'm going to be using the 45mm lens that I have to strike that balance of wide and close, so yeah. As for other gears, I'm also going to be bringing my GoPro Hero 11 so I can record the photo walk and make a YouTube video out of it at some point. I want to show you something cool though. So I bought this Olanzi GP16 frame and it's magnetized. So essentially you get two pieces. So you have the one where your GoPro attaches onto and you have one that has the string on it. And so what I do with this is that I just wear it like this and I lift it a little bit above so that it's actually on my chest. And I can hide it inside my shirt. And then I can just pop in my GoPro. See, I've been trying a lot of different ways to make sure that the way that I'm taking videos for YouTube does not in any way impede my photography experience. So the less that I faff around with the recording gear that I bring, the better. So yeah, I think I should charge this though. All right. For film, since it's winter and because the forecast says it's gonna be cloudy tomorrow, I thought I'm just gonna bring some black and white film because I think that color doesn't really work so well in cloudy situations. So might as well just concentrate on values and shapes and things like that rather than color. Okay, so black and white. All right. So last Christmas, I got a bunch of black and white film from Lomography like their Lady Grey 400 and Berlin 400. And I think I'm gonna be using one of the Berlin 400 ones because I've never used it before and I wanna see how it will perform. The box looks so nice. And I think I'm also gonna be using one roll of Kodak 400T Max. And if you're wondering why I still put my film on plastic bags in here, it's because I'm scared that this is gonna have a water leak for some reason. So yeah, might as well protect my film. We were also told to bring snacks because there won't be any place open to buy them. Uh, so I'm gonna be bringing these. Ooh, I should bring some water. Okay, time to pack. Here, I'm just rearranging the dividers to better fit the stuff I wanted to bring to the photo walk. I wanted to have four compartments, the top and lower halves of the bag, then subdivide the lower half to smaller compartments. Here, 
Here, I just remembered I should attach my peak design straps to the cameras I'm bringing. <laughs> I must say, I'm really a fan of peak design straps because you only need to buy the lugs and you can easily switch the strap to any camera you want to use at the moment. Anyways, I'm placing the Pan FT and the GoPro into the smaller compartments. So this arrangement allows me to access the Minolta SR505 with relative ease from the side of the bag. And the snacks go into the top compartment. <laughs> Happy Chinese New Year! And the film also goes into a pocket inside the top compartment. And since I wasn't bringing a tripod, I placed my water bottle on the side pocket but this is normally where I'd put a smallish tripod if I do bring one. Okay, so I think I managed to put everything that I wanted to bring in this bag now. But as I was trying to put everything in this bag, I realized that since I'm going to be taking photos in black and white, I thought I might as well bring some colored filters like this orange filter here and maybe this yellow filter to kind of give some more contrast to black and white photos. Now I have used some warm filters on some black and white photos before but I've never really done it that often so I'm not yet that familiar with the effects and I thought might as well just try them. The thing though is that they're a little bit too big for this lens in here so I'm gonna bring a step up ring right here to make sure that I can use them. Cool stuff. But I guess that's it for this video. Thank you very much for joining me. If you liked it, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more if you haven't yet. And I hope to see you all again in the next one. Cheers.